Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing symmetric groups. Okay, right, so I want to do two things in this video. Firstly, I want to work out the size of the SN group, so of an arbitrary SN group, basically. Okay, and there's a special piece of terminology that people use for the size of a group, okay, and that's the order of a group. Okay, so when people talk about the order of a group, that just means how many elements the group has. Of course, this presumes that the um, group is a finite group, which all of these SN groups are going to be. Okay, right. So what I want to work out is what is the order of S little n for any little n, okay? Well, we said that S little n is just this group that consists of uh, symbols representing every single one of the permutations of a set of n things, basically. One, two, three, all the way up to little n. Okay, so every possible set permutation of that set that exists is going to have a symbol representing it within this group. Okay, and then the composition law is just the composition of those set permutations. Okay, so what is the order? Order then of s little n, what is uh, the number of permutations of a set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n, basically? Okay, well, uh, let's just go over the page and figure this out. So, if we put our set here, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to little n, okay, and I'll draw it out again, let's think of how many different set permutations there are. Okay, so if we start off with the uh, element 1 here. How many different things can we map that element 1 onto? Well, we can map it onto number 1 here, or we can map it onto number 2, or number 3, or any one of the numbers all the way up to n, basically. So, as far as the number of choices that we have for where we send 1 is concerned, there are little n choices, so we can send it to all of these possibilities, basically. Okay, so, we can we have little m possibilities for where we send 1 in our set permutation. Okay, so let's say we've now set where we're going to send number 1. Okay, so number 1 goes to one of these, that's set. Okay, now let's move on to the next one, number 2. Okay, where are we going to send number 2? Okay, or rather, how many different places can we send number 2? So we've decided where we've sent number 1. Now, once we've set that, we have to decide where we send number 2. How many different possibilities are there for where you send number 2? Well, now it's n minus 1, because one of these is already used up, and that's the one that we've mapped 1 onto. So now there's only n minus 1 possibilities for where you send uh, number 2 here. Okay, so for each one of these places that you can send 1, there is then n minus 1 possibilities for where you can send 2, okay, and then so on. When we get to the number 3, where are we going to send number 3? Well, now there are n minus 2 possibilities, okay, because 2 of these have already been used up, the one that was sent, that 1 was sent onto and the one that 2 was sent onto, okay? But for every single part combination of where we can send 1 and where we can send 2, there is then n minus 2 places that we can send 3, and it goes on, you probably get the idea, we'll go all the way along to n here, okay, and once we're at the last uh, number here, once we're at little n here, there's only going to be one place where that can go because there's only one of these left over basically, so it'll go all the way down to times 1 basically. So of course the order of Sn is going to be n factorial because that's how many different set permutations of this set exist. Okay, right, so just to confirm this, we've looked at S1 and S2, S1 had only one permutation, that's 1 factorial, which is indeed 1, so that worked. Okay, S2 had two permutations, uh, that should be equal to 2 factorial, and indeed 2 factorial is uh, 2. Okay, now what I want to study is S3, okay, the order of S3, and we often write the order of S3 as uh, modulus signs, like so, you put two vertical lines on either side of uh, the name of your group here, okay, and that means the order of this group, so that will be 3 factorial, and 3 factorial is 6, 3 times 2 times 1, okay, so 6. Okay, so there's going to be six possible permutations of this set of three things, and all of them are going to be represented by symbols in this group S3. 
Then if we wanted to know what the order of S4 was, that would be 4 factorial 24, which is why we're not going to study S4 in detail, because it gets out of hand, basically, uh, with the number of elements. So S6 is just about doable with six elements. Okay, so let's start by looking at the six different permutations, giving them symbols, and then we'll draw a bit of the composition table. I'm not going to go through the entire composition table, because it takes quite a long time to actually work out what every single one is, but I'm going to uh, show you some of the entries just to illustrate key points, and one of the key points that I want to emphasize is that uh, S3 is not going to be commutative, there are going to be uh, compositions which are not commutative, and therefore it's our simplest example of a non-abelian group, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's firstly have a look then at the different permutations of this set of three elements. Let me start off with the identity permutation. So here is the identity mapping, which maps 1 onto 1, 2 onto 2, and 3 onto 3. Okay, let's do a few more set permutations. So now what we'll do is we'll have transpositions. Okay, so like transpositions that we've seen before, these are just going to swap two elements. Okay, so we'll have a transposition where we swap 1 and 2. Okay, and I might just give these mappings names. So we'll call the identity map I, as always. So this is the symbol we're going to use for this um, mapping here, and I'll just make that dot a little bit more obvious. Okay, then we've got our transposition here where we're swapping 1 and 2, but leaving 3 um, the same, basically. We map 3 onto 3. We'll call that the transposition tau of 1 and 2. So I'll put 1 and 2 down there uh, to remind us that we are transposing 1 and 2 and leaving 3 unchanged. So that's the transposition of 1 and 2. Okay, now there are other transpositions we can make. We've swapped 1 and 2 there, but we could swap 1 and 3 and leave 2 unchanged. So let's now put that permutation in here. So we'll leave 2 unchanged and we'll swap 1 and 3 around here. Okay, and we'll call that the transposition of 1 and 3, tau 1, 3. Okay, so here's another set permutation. So we're halfway through now. We've got 3 of them. We need to get up to 6. Okay, now another transposition. Okay, the final transposition is we could swap 2 and 3 and leave 1 unchanged. So here are 2 and 3 being swapped and then 1's remaining the same. Okay, so that's the transposition of 2 and 3, the tau 2, 3. Okay, right. So that's all of the transpositions, these set permutations where we're only swapping two of them and one of them remains the same. The final two permutations are going to move everything, basically. Nothing is going to remain the same. Okay, right. So these are the cyclic ones, the ones which cycle everything around. Okay, so one will go to two, two will then go to three, and three will go to one. That's one of these permutations. Okay, and we'll call that one sigma. Okay, so I'll colour in sigma in orange, I think. Okay, and then the final permutation that exists is basically what you get if you square this one, if you do this one and then this one again. So where will everything go? Well, one will go to two when we do this the first time. When we do it a second time, two will end up going to three. Okay, uh, so that means that overall, when we compose this mapping with itself, we'll end up getting one going to three, Okay, then let's think about where 2 will go. 2 will go to 3 under the first mapping, then when we repeat the mapping again, and in fact I might just draw this out quickly. Okay, so let's imagine what will happen if we do this cycle again, okay, twice. So here is it being done the first time. Okay, now let's do it a second time, so I'll just draw it out again. Okay, so we'll send 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 1. Okay, now we're asking what's the net here. Well, we can see that 1 goes to 3, we can see that 2 goes to 1, okay, and we can see that 3 goes to 2, okay. So this one here, the final permutation of these uh, three numbers is, we'll call it sigma squared, okay, because it is sigma composed with sigma. Okay, right. So, those are the uh, six different permutations of this set containing three elements, basically. This is S3, and we've now got lots of names for these permutations. So what I'm now going to do to create S3 is I'm going to make a set containing all of these elements. So it'll have I, it'll have tau 1, 2, it'll have tau 1, 3, it'll have tau 2, 3, it'll have sigma and sigma squared in. 
okay? And now I'm going to define a composition law on that, okay? And the way I'm going to work out what any two elements composed with one another is, is by composing together their set permutations, basically. So I'll call this abstract composition, and then I'll put every element up here. So I, tau 1, 2, tau 1, 3, tau 2, 3, and then sigma and sigma squared. And then again, I'll have every element shown down here. I, tau 1, 2, tau 1, 3, tau 2, 3, sigma and sigma squared. Okay, now, uh, I've got 36 entries then to fill in, and as I say, I'm not going to do all of them, but there are some easy ones that we can easily put in. Okay, so we know that when we compose the identity map with any other map, it just leaves that map the same, basically. Okay, so we can fill in this column here, and we can fill in this row here. So the identity composed with the identity, we know that that's the identity. Tau12 composed with the identity, we know that that will just equal Tau12. Tau13 composed with the identity will just equal Tau13. The same for Tau23, the same for Sigma and Sigma squared. And it's the same when you do it the other way around. So the identity composed with Tau12 is Tau12. The identity composed with Tau13 is Tau13. One, three, and so on. Okay, so those are the easy entries. Now, uh, let's think um, about some other easy entries here. Okay, so some easy entries are where you square the transposition. So what happens when you square, for instance, the transposition 1, 2? Okay, well, remember what the transposition 1, 2 means. It means uh, transpose 1 and 2. Now, if you do that twice, of course, you'll end up just moving 1 to 2 and then 2 back to 1, okay? Just like when we squared transpositions previously in S2, it ended up giving us back the identity element. In the case of these transpositions here, when we square them, it will give back the identity element just because you're swapping two elements around, and then if you do it twice, you'll end up swapping them back, okay? So transposition 1, 2 squared will equal the identity, transposition 1, 3 squared will equal the identity, and transposition 2, 3 squared will equal the identity. Okay, right. Uh, some other easy ones are where we do sigma composed with sigma. Well, we know exactly what that gives. We've written it out there. Okay, so it will give us sigma squared. Okay, what about sigma squared composed with sigma squared? Well, here what we should think about is what is sigma to the power of 3? Okay, let's just do this one more time. So let's add another sigma onto here. Okay, so sigma takes 1 onto 2, 2 onto 3, and 3 onto 1. Now, what overall is that map? What is sigma to the power of 3? Well, you'll notice 1 goes to 2, goes to 3, goes back to 1. So 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 3, goes to 1, goes to 2, 2 goes to 2. That means that 3 must go to 3. There's no other option but just follow it through. 3 goes to 2, goes to 3. 3 goes back to 3. So sigma cubed is actually equal to the identity. Okay, so if we're going to compose sigma squared with sigma squared, then we've effectively got sigma to the power of 4. We know that sigma to the power of 3 is equal to the identity. So what we could say is that this is just sigma 3 composed with sigma, which is the identity composed with sigma, and therefore this must just equal sigma, basically. Okay, we can also fill in some other entries here. We can compose sigma with sigma squared, and we know what that is equal to. That will give us the identity because we'll just get sigma cubed. We can also do sigma squared composed with sigma the other way around, and that will also, of course, give us the identity. So those are some easy ones to fill in there. Okay, that still leaves us with quite a few blanks in here. Now, these are the more complicated ones to work out, okay? Uh, I'm only going to do two more, okay? You can go through and work out every single one of these remaining entries if you want. It's quite time-consuming, but it's a satisfying exercise, okay? Uh, the next two entries that I want to show you are to illustrate the non-abelianness or non-commutativity of this composition law, basically. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm quite simply going to ask what goes here and what goes here, okay? And are they the same? Because, of course, if this was a commutative composition law, then it should be symmetrical down this diagonal line here, okay? Uh, because if x composed with y is equal to y composed with x, those two entries are um, mirror images of one another in this composition table down this diagonal line. Okay, right, so what I'm going to ask is, is tau12 composed with tau13 equal to tau13 composed with tau12? 
uh, sorry, tower 1, 2. Okay, so I'll put a question mark up there. So is it equal to tower 1, 3 composed with tower 1, 2? And you might be able to guess from the way that I built this up that the answer is no. Okay, but let's see that for ourselves. Okay, right, so let's start with this one on this side. So this means do tower 1, 3 followed by tower 1, 2 and see what the answer is. So let's do this. So here we'll have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, whoops, 3, 1, 2, 3. So let's firstly do tower 1, 3. So that means transpose 1 and 3 around but keep 2 the same. Now we'll do tower 1, 2 which is transpose 1 and 2, keep 3 the same. What overall is that? Well we're sending 1 to 3, okay, so let's write out what this is overall. Okay, so this is the overall result. We send 1 overall to 3, just following this along, we sent 1 to 3. Uh, we send 2 to 1, okay, and we send 3 overall to 2. And we can see that that is sigma squared here, okay? So tau 1, 2 composed with tau 1, 3, this entry here is sigma. Now let's work out what tau 1, 3 composed with tau 1, 2 is. So that means do tau 1, 2 first. Okay, and then do tau 1, 3. So let's just do this. So here is tau 1, 2 coming up first here. So we transpose 1 and 2, and then we transpose 1 and 3. Okay, like so. And now let's write out the net result here. Okay, so where does 1 go firstly? Firstly, 1 goes to 2. Okay, 2 goes to 3. Okay, and you can probably guess what this is already. And 3 goes to 1. So that is, whoops. I filled in this wrong. That's sigma squared, this one. This one was sigma squared, not sigma, so let me just repair that damage. Okay, so this one was sigma squared, this one is sigma. Okay, so we should fill that in as sigma. I apologize for that. Right, so you can see that these two are not equal to one another. That is not true, okay? This composition law is not symmetrical down the diagonal line. It's not necessarily true that when you compose two set permutations together, the answer is uh, doesn't matter what order you put them in, basically. It does in this case, and it does in many cases, basically. Okay, so often symmetric groups are not abelian groups. In fact, for all of the symmetric groups beyond S2, uh, they are not abelian groups. So S1 and S2, because they're so simple, are abelian groups, but S3 onwards, uh, so S4, S5, S6, all of them, uh, none of them are abelian groups, and S3 is a nice simple example of a non-abelian group. Okay, but it does obey all of the axioms of group theory, as we've talked through all of the symmetric groups obey the axioms of group theory. Okay, right, so I'm not going to finish this composition table because it does take uh, quite a bit of time to go through all of these and calculate all of the entries, but you can quite simply, I hope, um, calculate what the rest of the answers in here are and finish that composition table. Okay, right, so that now concludes our discussion of the symmetric groups.